And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, welcome to uh, Dumb SEO Questions, um, episode 401. Uh, each week, uh, we uh, meet here to review the answers and questions that uh, dealt with on the uh, uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us today, we have uh, Masataki Wasa in stereo. Uh, Masataki is webmaster of wasaweb.net. He's uh, based in Wimbledon in the sunny south of London. Um, and uh, David uh, he, uh, Masataki is, is a Google product expert in the AdSense uh, community. And um, you can find him at wasaweb.net. David Razam is a leading internet marketer. Um, he's based in the West Sussex uh, on the bottom uh, sunny shores of the UK. Um, David can be found at davidrazam.com. And um, Tim Kappa. Um, Tim Kappa uh, is uh, CEO of onlineownership.com. He's based uh, in Corby, about 100 miles north of London. And uh, he's also a Google product expert on the uh, um, Google My Business uh, community. All right, uh, let's uh, have, have a look. We've got nine questions tonight. Um, Okay, let's have a look at them. Uh, question one, can you add a specific schema to a single category uh, without a, it affecting other categories? Don't you guys fight over this? Well, I think Richard answered that. Use Yoast's API? Uh, yeah, or you can or you can set it in a specific category page itself in HTML. But that's obviously manual. Okay, yeah. Um, Jay Alfavario knows what's what. Um, so what, we can call this an answer and move on to the next, yes? Okay, number two on our run list, guys. Uh, uh, it's titled, How Are People Finding and Using Bloggers to Build Links? Uh, it's from Kerry Reid, who went on to say, hello, I wanted to know how to receive slash work with bloggers about links. Um, is there a strategy such as a website that you pay that directs you to bloggers that fits your niche or agency, etc.? cetera? Um, how are people finding and using bloggers uh, to build links? My curiosity is based on not noticing my competitors having many links from bloggers, and I'm not sure how... Um, how they are finding them and working with them. This, uh, this is a difficult one. Um, the idea of um, having, uh, having links built is not very popular on uh, dummy, dumb SEO questions. We don't do it. But um, there's also a legitimate uh, way of using online PR to do this, um, to contact and connect with bloggers in, and encourage them to write about you and your products, um, in which case it's possibly a, a, a bit less nasty. Um, it's not something I do and it's not something I know a lot about, but you're going to have to be very careful that you don't end up buying a load of crazy, shitty links from low quality uh low quality blogs that have been put up just to to build links and to relieve you of money um so yeah um 
this is not the best of answers but yeah the, it, it is a uh, it can be a uh, a legitimate way of uh, uh, of of increasing your seo should we say um but it's not something i do it's not my expertise i mean if you if you look so i'm i'm going to exclude the 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 any of the crap in terms of just buying shit blog stuff online okay um that gets sold you probably get 50 emails 100 emails a day blah 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 so i'm excluding that crap if you actually wanted to go down the the road of actual marketing right this is just about creating this is about creating the connections with the media and when i say media uh blogging is a form of media now okay and it's it's like the same thing that you've done uh, that, that that's gone on even before the web it's about building relationships with particular authors in particular genres um if they don't know about your product it's about um meeting them uh you know nowadays obviously it's it's you, you know you you've got the you've got the benefit of social media but um you know in the old days you would send them a product or whatever that have a look at it have a play with it and if they liked it they'd write about it uh essentially that's the same kind of thing now but with social media um uh building relationships with them and ultimately if they like it they um uh, you know, will will obviously uh, include you in in anything that is upcoming or relevant or or, or things like that. Um, so it's about building those relationships with the different people uh, within your market space that are writers, bloggers, traditional media um you know uh you, you know you can even go down the road of youtubers um who particularly you know write about particular products brands or whatever the case may be there, there's there's a whole load of way of going through that but essentially you build up that relationship with them online thank you tim Okay, I, I think that's a, a, a good wrap on a good way to wrap up the, the question. And let's move on to number three on our run list. Um, this one uh, is titled Does Google Care About uh, the Protocol in Terms of Link Building? Um, he said, uh, I have a lot of old links that are HTTP. Um, I must, uh, before we start, I must point out Michael Martinez, uh, and uh, he would have the good oil. Um, he said the protocol doesn't matter. Okay, so let's call that one answered two, and we'll move on to number three. Sorry, move on to number four. Um, Stephen Goldman asked the question titled, can I win the battle to rank inner pages over so someone's homepage? Of course, of course you can. Um, hello, um, Stephen said, uh, he said, I'm new to this group and I'm hoping someone can answer my question. I'm using Surfer SEO, whatever that is, um, to um, help create content on pages that I'm trying to rank higher on. Um, on a search engine results page analyzer, um, when I put a search terms such as Chicago criminal lawyer, the URLs that rank highest are my competitors' uh, home pages rather than their practice area pages. Um, I have been. Uh, oh, damn. Sorry, I'm, I made a mistake there. Yeah, I have. Uh, I have been um, uh, trying to rank my practice area page with that term and not necessarily my homepage. 
uh, should I be using the content editor to create content for my practice area page by including their homepage content? It's kind of comparing apples to oranges. The uh, amount of words and terms will be completely different when the uh, program compares their home pages to my single practice area page. Um, or should I just write uh, that content uh, for my home page and 301 my practice area page to the home page? Goodness me. Um, the bottom line question, if my local competition's home pages are ranking for the keywords I'm gunning for, uh, should I try to uh, uh, optimize my home page for those keywords instead of trying to rank inner pages? Um, can I, can I uh, ever win the battle to rank inner pages over someone's home page in a very com competitive market uh, with a very uh, competitive keyword? Thanks. So I think you're looking at this completely in the wrong wrong way here. And my first question is, is you're talking about sort of a criminal attorney Chicago as uh, an internal page. But if you are a criminal attorney Chicago in Chicago, that is your, essentially your business. So that would be your homepage. And I don't understand why you would be building. I don't understand why you'd be building a a service page for that, right? If you are a criminal attorney in Chicago, that would be your homepage, and that's how you would be marking up that page. Then you would offer possibly different services. So you may offer things like, uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know what's criminal, um, uh, what you defend. I don't know, let's say assault, GBH, uh, assault and GBH, um, uh, breaking and entering or whatever, right? Those would be services, specific niche services, okay, uh, as pages. But as the overall main topic of the entire site, it's a criminal attorney or, or, or should we say, um, you, you know, the whole basis. So I don't know why you're going to be, if you're marking yourself as an attorney in Chicago, then going to create criminal attorney in Chicago internal page, right? Um, do, do you see what I mean? So um, you, you need to decide what you do. And like, so no, I don't, look, if, if that page of yours, which essentially sounds like a duplication of your actual main site itself um then then yeah fine 301 it, it's not gonna it's not gonna do any harm just yeah yeah 301 it uh if you want to get rid of it um to your home page but you know either but then again you know just rem remember that that's probably not going to be you know uh, like any major benefit to you anyway um but inner pages can rank you just need to they just need to be you know separate enough for, for Google to understand them. And like I've explained, the two things are pretty much just the same, you know, a criminal lawyer, whatever, it's same, kind of same thing. Uh, what you may then want to do is start looking at things which are probably going to convert a little bit better. I, I don't, look, I mean, I, I've never done any research on it but i doubt somebody wakes up in the morning and site types oh i need a criminal lawyer yeah they probably type in something to do with what they were arrested for or what they need a lawyer for right so that may be something to do with someone specializing in uh, I, I have no bloody idea breaking and entering or home invasion or or whatever the case may be so i would probably start looking at providing those kind of service pages also which specialize um, uh, in, in what you do, how it works, how you charge, what information do you need? Um, I don't know if you guys are allowed to do like case studies, but I'm guessing when something's gone to court, it, it's already in the public domain. Um, uh, I don't know, but case studies would probably work on that. Um, <coughs> that you've worked on. Um, 
so yeah, the, 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 yeah, yeah, but that's what you know. I would I would recommend you look at is you know not trying to create an internal page for something that the actual site is. Um, th that that would be my first suggestion there. Uh, then of course you can be looking at different types of content and siloing it, or at least supporting content that would support your internal pages on the niche specific parts of the criminal, you know, whatever you defend, right? So, so that would then support those internal pages. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think you're, you're looking at it completely the wrong way and you've probably not understanding whatever analyzer you're using um, and, and, and how the actual sort of the, the, the the web looks at topics and and content and and, and tries to to show the best possible uh, page for that. Yes, all of that. I uh, let's take it apart a little bit more. I think um, I don't know Surfer SEO. I've never used it, but um, reading your your question, it sounds as if it's encouraging you to focus um each page on a single search term um i don't know if it does but that's that's what your question is suggesting to me um and i wonder whether your home page is um is focusing on chicago uh, criminal attorney or chicago criminal law um rather than chicago criminal lawyer um, and you're trying to you're trying to focus on each of these using separate pages. Well, yes, you can make your your uh, your your internal pages uh, outrank someone's homepage. That's that's no problem at all. Um, write a good page. Write a better page than your uh, than your competitor's homepage, and pop, you'll be there. But um, your oh, and and lots of other things too, like getting some uh, some good links, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm I'm making that sound uh, too easy. But the point is that you you know do something better than your uh, your competitors, and you will outrank them. Um, but I suspect you're getting caught up in the mechanics of how Surfer SEO works, rather than trying to write um, a sensible and good uh, website um, that will help your um, help your clients or help your prospective clients um, and going back to these these key phrases these search terms um, I think that Google will probably um, appreciate you writing about uh, Chicago criminal attorney, uh, Chicago uh, criminal law, and cre Chicago criminal lawyer um, in one piece that talks about Chicago criminal services, shall we say. And I don't mean going out and robbing people, not that sort of criminal services, that's, that's different. Um, but um, yeah, think, think about the way your content works and think about the way uh that that content uh so, sorry that key phrases can have similar meanings and if they can have similar meanings then i think you need to think about writing one big piece that talks properly about all of these similar things rather than going about a kind of mechanistic way of saying okay we're going to talk about um, um, about Chicago criminal law again, um, and we're going to write this piece, and we're going to put Chicago criminal law in it so many times, and I'm going to put them in the uh, in in the uh, title tag, and I'm going to put them in the, uh, the the meta description, and I'm going to put them in H1, and further down in H2, and three times in the in the copy. Um, I don't know what Surfer SEO does. I, I'm probably being very rude about it. I hope it's a lot, lot more subtle than that. But 
your your question tends to suggest you're going down that sort of route rather than thinking about your your content properly. Yeah, and also not getting re restricted um, into not doing your best work. Uh, we've just been joined by Micah Fisher Kirshner. Micah, uh, um, he um, has been compiling uh, an it would have been called an anthology, um, uh, 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 a running commentary on uh, um, Donald Trump, uh, he, the journey of Donald Trump and his uh, quest to be the biggest loser of all time. And um, yeah, tell us about it, uh, Micah. Are you are you publishing a book? <laughs> I I do plan to self publish it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's mainly been uh, a daily view into some of the uh, uh, things that uh, Tr Trump and his administration did every single day, as kind of a quick snippet of of. Uh, <clears throat> what was the most thematically important, uh, biggest thing, uh, what occurred and how much of a difference, uniqueness, so to speak, that was in comparison um, as a kind of, from my, my side of it, a, a kind of quick snippet to deal with the uh, insanity that it was. It was, uh, I mean, there must be something wrong when um, uh, something happens uh, electorally in the USA and the entire world celebrates and the entire world breathes a, a sigh of relief. Um, there's something going on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have, a, we have a lot of work in terms of revitalizing what the US... So there's a lot of a lot of things that need to be worked back up. Well, uh, I guess you can take uh, comfort from um, uh, France's uh, message. Uh, uh, welcome back. <laughs> Among others, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, before we move on, I, I just want to also mention uh, Tim Kappa. Tim uh, caught. Uh, Cov ID um, and uh, you know he, he's he's survived all odds. He hasn't died yet. I mean, he is moving, isn't he? I can't quite see. <laughs> all right, let's um, move on. We've still got um, five more questions before we can call the night complete. Um, so let's uh, do those. Um, yeah. Unless you want to say something more, uh, Mike. Okay. All right. Uh, number uh, five on our run list. It's from Ian Powers. It's titled, Google gave me two different meta descriptions. Um, and I'm sure there'd be more than that, maybe. Um Anyway, Ian went on to say, I feel like I've come so far in six months with SEO, but uh, the, yeah, there's so much to learn that's true. Uh, he said, I have a site that is two words in the domain, widgetstuff.com, uh, for example. Uh, when you search for widget stuff, it comes up fifth in the rankings with the uh, proper meta description. But when you search for wid widget space with the space between widget and stuff, it comes up first in the ranking, but with a messy uh, meta description sl slapped um, um, together by Google. Um, uh, do you guys have any recommendations? So the, the meta description is a function of um, <clears throat> that, that you see in the SERPs is a function of Google 
um, looking for the query that the user has typed in. So the uh, unfortunate differences between kind of a, a space and no space, for example, is such that um, Google does see it as a, in this, I guess in, in this case, as a different word. So if the um, use of it is not in the, one of the uses of it is not in the meta description, then it is far less likely to take it from, or basically take your meta description and will look in your copy um, as a backup instead. Um, so, yeah, I, as, as kind of Richard notes here, it's, it's, it's quite common for Google to, to rewrite your meta description and more so if you're not actually using the specific phrase that users are, are looking for. Um, so there's, there's really not much you can do in terms of absolutely preventing uh, Google from rewriting your, your description, um, but you can reduce the chance by making sure that you're using the more likely queries of how users are searching to get to your page. Thank you, Micah. All right, let's um, move on to number six on our run list. Um, David Gaskin, it's, the question is titled, Passing a, a Search Engine Optimization Value from the Closing Store to the Remaining Store. Um, David said, hey, guys, uh, so a client has two related businesses but separate store locations slash websites. One of those uh, businesses is closing and we want to preserve slash save uh, any uh, um, SEO value um, from uh, the closing business and pass it on to the remaining business. I figure 301 redirecting everything from the closing website and trying to uh, spread the links slash redirects uh, across um, relevant pages to the remaining website and letting Google know by Google My Business, maybe Search Console, brackets in, um, that the property is closing uh, should do it. Uh, am I missing anything? Thanks. Um. <clears throat> While I can't talk about uh, Google My Business, it's not my my area of expertise. Um, I would say definitely, uh, if the business is shutting down and the domain's shutting down, then you would want to, <clears throat> assuming it's a separate domain, um, make sure that you're doing so in in Google Search Console to highlight um, that there's you know you're you're merging the domains or moving the domain over. Um, otherwise, like if it's if it's just a separate URL, then then yeah, you know, um, three one redirect uh, to kind of the closest location um, if it's relevant in terms of how close they are. If it's not relevant, then you know you you should just have a page that is highlighting that the business is going away, is closing down, etc. Um, which I would probably recommend doing first if you have a sufficient number of users who might be thrown off by that and, and need to be aware before fully getting rid, getting rid of it. Um, uh, you know, I would make sure, especially if it's more than a single URL, that you try to find kind of a one-to-one -one URL mapping uh, in addition to that. So that if, um, <clears throat> you know, location A with service A goes to location B with service B as the URL, um, you, you want to make sure that it's purely that to that mapping and not everything to just one URL. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. <clears throat> yeah, in, in terms of GMB, I mean, essentially the store is closed, so you should kind of just mark it as closed. Um, ordinarily, if it was within very close proximity, you can normally convince support to merge it into your your remaining store but that's only if it's very close proximity which it probably isn't um and when i mean close i mean i'm talking within a block uh or two 
you know, you could get away with talking them into it and they would merge it. And essentially all of that would be merged with into one. Uh, and and you, you certainly benefit from that. Um, if you can't get away with that, the best is obviously to market as permanently closed on GMB. Uh, that's good for users because they're not going to end up driving to the store and getting pissed off with you and your brand. Uh, but what I would do is, um, you know, have your, obviously on the URL that you have got linked, uh, that would be linked to a page on site, which would be, hi, you know, we're closed, but please visit our, you know, here's our current store that's open. Um, so that, you know, any customers, you you are passing them on to the, the you know, the, the you are retaining them and moving them on. Um, for them to say, well, look, here is the next available store. Um, so, you know, that's from, from, you know, a customer point of view. If they do click through without seeing the permanently closed um, label, then at least they can see it online and then move through to your, your next available store. So, so that's the best bit. Um, uh, ultimately, when you eventually remove the you know, your holding page saying the store's closed and you just have it redirecting to the main brand, uh, that URL will redirect again from GMB. You can go and directly change it, but I would probably just allow it to to do the redirect. Um, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it from a GMB point of view. Thank you, Tim. Right, um, let's wrap that uh, as an answer for uh, David and move on to the next. This one is, uh, it's titled Loading the Correct Domain Based on Location. Um, and he said, in this case, uh, country-specific domains, uh, say you have www.example.com targeting the US, and www.example.co.uk targeting UK. Uh, both websites sell kitchen apparel and have identical product descriptions. Uh, but because the pricing and uh, delivery costs differ, you want to make sure that you're sending the right people to the right uh, website. And um, of, of course, uh, um, Oh, what have I done wrong here, guys? Um, oh, of course, you want to avoid duplicate content. Okay. href lang attributes are the answer here. They tell Google which page targets which country. So Google can display the .com website to US searches and the .co.uk website uh, to people from the UK. Um, there is no need for, uh, is there a need for a canonical tag? Because there is a, a language tag. Uh, I am confused. Okay. So, um, a canonical tag. Yeah. So, um, in terms of what I think you're trying to get on, on the canonical tag part, start there. It's not that you don't need you don't need to use a canonical to signify that the UK is the same one basically as the um, as the US version. However, um, it doesn't mean you yeah you know, that that's essentially what you're trying to do with the HRF line. The canonical tag and the use of that is is more for if um, yeah, you want to use it as a self-referential in the case of maybe you have parameters that go at the end of either the UK or the US URL, and you want to make sure that you signify that the t there are two uh, resolved <coughs> URLs that you want in the end, one of the UK, one for the US. And so you, you may need a canonical for that situation. So you in the end, that means you may need both a canonical and an href lang. Um, the other larger point that I would be mindful of and careful about with hreflang is that uh, hreflang is not a dedupe across languages uh, or languages 
across countries. Um, in fact, if they are fairly similar enough, there's a good chance Google may ignore um, the nature of threat entirely. Uh, this is at least something I've run into where um, if if you're not differentiating the content sufficiently, um, regardless of HF Wang saying otherwise, that they are for different countries, uh, Google will sometimes still ignore that and choose who if they feel is the um, best URL for either country. And so um, you will need to make sure that your content is sufficiently different in order to avoid the it looking and considering it to be um, duplicate pages than anything else. Uh, that That's just one of those things I would kind of note um, and, be, and be mindful of. Um, you, know, you may not run into it, but uh, it, it has been something particularly with other languages, um, you know, like say two different Spanish versions where uh, because the content was not sufficiently different enough, um, they would choose the wrong language for the wrong country, or right language, wrong dialect for the wrong country. Thank you, Micah. Okay. Um, unless there's anybody else, I think we can move on uh, at this point. Yeah, it looks like that. Okay, let's do that. So number uh, eight on our run list uh, is that uh, does Google care about uh, trailing slashes in a link profile? Um, does page rank uh, split between example.com and example.com slash with a trailing slash? Um, the one that you need to be concerned about is whether or not you are using or having links going to a trailing slash or lack thereof when it comes to a, uh, a long URL, or not a long URL, um, a non homepage URL. Um, that can create um, uh, duplicate content. Um, not from a, you know, it, you know, it just, it's a confusing signal of which one is supposed to be the actual URL. And um, so in, in that situation, yeah, they care. Um, same thing if you were to, to do a variety of capitalization or non-capitalizations. Um, so it's just something where you, you know, want to make sure, do what you can to uh, standardize your URLs in that regard. Um, but I've not run into any issues when it comes to just the um, the main level, the, the domain uh, URL with or without a slash. So that part I wouldn't worry about. Yeah. Also point out that Michael Martinez uh, said that they do not care and you can take usually take anything that Michael says to the bank and they'll cash it for you. Um, Thomas uh, Igna Ignatovicius uh, um, asked, requested a link from Michael. Uh, um, but I, I'd, I'd reassure Thomas to, uh, that uh, you, know, you would only need a link from Michael if you were writing a book and you wanted to give a citation. Um, all right. So, Let's move on to the... Jim, yeah, what yeah, the I'm hell just... are you going on about, mate? What are you going on about? I didn't mean? understand that last two minutes of what you were talking about. Okay, well, I, I, was, I was saying I'm, I'm, I'm just referring to the uh, um, reader responses through the week. Ah, right, okay, because you lost me there, mate. You were talking about... So t I'm like, what are you on about? <laughs> Oh, I'm 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 half sober too, you know. <laughs> um, well, that's no bloody good. <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on to the next. Everybody's happy now and reassured. Uh, yep. Okay. 
All right, Kunjal Chawahan uh, wants to know how to remove unwanted pages from Google's cache. Um, f for example, pages that a hacker added, uh, which you uh, removed using removals and added redirects, but those pages are still in Google's cache, uh, i.e. A cache uh, URL shows the page, uh, um, yeah, in in Google's case. Um, this has happened to me in the past, and uh, I, I can vouch that, that, they, that these things just stay resident uh, uh, in the results for, for months and months, maybe years. Um, anyway, what do we have an answer for Conjal guys? Richard answered it. <laughs> if you scroll down a bit. Uh -huh. Yeah, the only thing that sort of got me slightly worried um, in the question was um, redirecting the hacked pages, you know, it should be returning 410 or 404 rather than being redirected to somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so, so we're satisfied that a 410 is, is going to cure this. Um, okay, so let me click this button and uh, it's that time again. We've done it again, guys. We've answered uh, all of the questions asked on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, We'll be back uh, at the same time next week um, to do this uh, all again. Um, but before we go, I, I want to thank uh, people like uh, uh, Michael Martinez and, and, and uh, Barbara um, and people like Michael Stricker, um, uh, people that answer questions uh, um, through the week and uh, make dumb SEO questions such a valuable uh, resource. Um, and of course, not to forget uh, you guys uh, and, and the, the contribution that you make um, um, and answering these uh, live. And we turn up every week and um, as a badge of honour, we don't look them up first. <laughs> All right. Um, so if nobody has anything to add, I'll um, shut this one off. Okay, so um, let me try and find the right button to click.